I'm going to read my um, essay, a very short essay called The God of Bird's Nests. If you happen to come upon a bird's nest along the way, in any tree or on the ground, with young ones or eggs, and the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. And that's Deuteronomy 22.6. This verse kept going through my head when I, along with about a thousand others, marched on the Kentucky State Capitol recently. We were there to protest mountaintop removal particularly the devastating effect it has on our waterways, which are being forever affected by the ravages of this form of coal mining. So, in honor of that, we first gathered on the banks of the still beautiful Kentucky River, united by a common goal, to lift up our voices and ask that our mountains and our water be protected. I don't even remember ever being taught this particular verse, but there it was, floating before me as we marched up that avenue, and it was a comfort throughout the day. While out there protesting, it was impairing to see those people, all those people standing up for what they believed in, walking up the Capitol steps holding that sign of protest, not one more mile, while chanting with everyone else, was an incredibly moving moment. Together, we were a force to be reckoned with. Together, we were loud enough to be heard throughout the city. Together, we were making a difference. Ashley Judd was there, and we all knew that's what the media would latch on to. But she was not there as the movie star Ashley Judd. She was there as a proud Appalachian, a concerned citizen, someone who cares for the bird's nest. People like to criticize celebrities when they speak out. They say they don't want someone famous telling them what to believe. But Judd was simply there voicing what she believes, and she believes in what she's saying. She gave her time to be there, paid her own way, asked for nothing in return. She was there because she believes in protecting the environment and believes in everyone being good to one another. This is a lesson the coal companies and the government and big business will be well served to learn as well. There were dozens of children. The youngest was so little she was strapped to her mother's chest. Some of them chanting into the bullhorn, holding their signs high above their heads. One teacher, Blossom Brosey, brought over a hundred students from her high school. There were college students emboldened by the possibility of change. The oldest marcher, Marie Cassidy, is 96 years old. And I saw so many people who have fought tirelessly and bravely for years and years now. They are not about to give up. Among them were people like Terry Blanton, Carl Shute, Jim Webb, Bev Futrell, Sue Massey. George and Connie Brosey, and many more. But the person I want to pause to point out is Patty Wallace, a woman from Louisa, Kentucky, who has been fighting the coal industry for decades. She once recounted to me that she, quote, ran down a coal truck driver to thank him for driving safely when the company so often forced them to speed up to keep up with production. I was once told by my boss that I let other people's problems become too important to me, she says but I just could never stand by and see people take advantage of because they were afraid or didn't know how to fight. Wallace also talked about the late Hazel King who fought tirelessly against the industry to protect her land, recalling King saying, when they haul the coal out of Black Mountain, it's just like tearing out my heart. Ironically, Wallace had a heart stent put in just a few days before the march, but she was out there walking that line anyway. According to her friends, Wallace's heart rhythm was struggling. As we came up Capitol Avenue, she grew tired, but she refused to stop. Police officers offered to carry her the rest of the way up, but she refused. I can rest while I walk, she said. She was determined to make her voice heard, to stand up for what she believed in, to give of herself to protect the water and the mountain. Patty Wallace is a protector of bird's nests and one of my heroes. But it was a frustrating day too. Frustrating to see little children holding jars of rusty well water, polluted by coal companies who claim to be making our land a better place. Frustrating to see people having to march to save their water, our most precious commodity. It's mind boggling, like something out of a science fiction novel that people would actually have to fight for their water. Even more frustrating to know that our governor refused to come out and hear our pleas even though he did come out to greet coal mining officials on the front steps of the Capitol, 
less than a year ago. What's even more frustrating is that Governor Bashir is a good man who has stood up to the industry in the past. His refusal to come greet us worried me that the industry has gotten through to him too. I think what Deuteronomy 22.6 is saying is that we have to be kind to even the smallest creatures. I believe it means that we should be compassionate and thoughtful and responsible. That it means that we should not be short-sighted or mean-hearted or greedy. To be good people, the verse says, we must all be protectors of bird's nest. However, I believe that the Bible is a living thing and that its wisdom is only as good and thick as its readers allow it to be. People have been misconstruing the Bible for ages for their own benefit and have done a great job of it, using it to hold up slavery, anti-suffrage, and intolerance. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I choose to seek the positive in the Bible. The light, the God I believe in, is one of love and compassion, not wrath and jealousy. I believe in God of bird's nests.